Hello and welcome to a brand new Andy Lights Cars audio review. This time we will be looking at the Bose Wave Free CD radio alarm clock, a product that when launched retailed at 499 US dollars. So where did it all begin? Well in 1984 the first product following 14 years of acoustic research and development by Bose was launched. Bose called it the Acoustic Wave Music System. The idea was that inside there would be a small bass speaker, and by making that sound go through a long tube which was shaped into the product's internals, the bass could be amplified, allowing for deeper, richer bass than would otherwise be possible in a product of its size. The Acoustic Wave Music System was launched with the AW1, which had a tape player and a radio, in 1992, this was replaced by the CD2000, which saw the tape mechanism replaced with a CD. This also saw a big change in how the internal tubes were shaped. Note here how the AW1 differs from the CD2000. There also appears to be two other versions that were available. The first one, the AW1D, uses the same body as the other acoustic wave music systems but has a CD player and a tape deck. The second one I found, the AWM, also has a CD and a tape but has a different body. Anyway, in 2006 the final iteration of the acoustic wave music system, the acoustic wave music system 2, was launched and it soldiered on till 2017. I also have one of these in my collection. I have a full review of the system where I dive much deeper into the acoustic wave development and history and the man who created the system, Dr. Armar Bose. You can see this video by clicking here. Bose launched their smaller wave radio range in 1993. The first version was just a radio alarm clock but used the same concept of folding tubes to create better bass frequencies. In the first version you can see here that one speaker is enclosed traditionally while the other speaker's rear is open and this is the sound that is amplified and it ends up going through a front facing port. In 1998 Bose added a CD player to the Wave. When Bose launched its successor, the Bose Wave 2, Bose redesigned the internals so that now the backward facing tones of each speaker would be channeled up separate tubes and converged together to fire out a rear facing port. Bose say that there are 66 centimeters of tubes inside this version of the Wave. The Bose Wave 3, which is what I will be showing today, has improved AM FM reception but was visually the same. The final version of the Bose Wave 4 had a more updated appearance, but retains the same internals. Truth be told, I have always wanted a Bose Wave radio to use as a bedside table alarm clock, so I found this one on the auction site Trade Me, and it was listed for parts not working. I ended up paying 100 New Zealand dollars for it. So when I got it home, I gave it a look over, and while it powered on, the clock worked, the unit would go through modes like radio and CD, but no sound came out. I did a bit of research and found out that the problem probably lies with the capacitors, and by replacing these, it should bring life back into the unit. All up, there were about 50 that needed replacing. I opened up the unit and soon realized that there were a few issues. Actually, fitting the capacitors into this tight space required a little bit of origami as there is only space for the surface mount capacitors and the electrolytic capacitors take up more space. I started replacing the larger capacitors as my assumption was that because these would hold more charge they would more likely need replacing. Things were going well until... Okay so I started to replace the capacitors and I ran into a little bit of trouble where I actually ripped the solder pad 
off one of the contacts. Uh, so I've replaced some of the capacitors and I just wanted to pause to see if I'd done any irreversible damage and to see if the display still works. So let's plug it in and see what it looks like. That's good news, it still powers on. So let's see if it makes any sound. Well, there we go. Replacing some capacitors has brought a little bit of life back to this unit. I also put a CD in here and it's still not quite working, so that'll be the next thing to work on. So, at this point, was it job done? I hadn't replaced all the capacitors, but it seemed to be working. Well, not quite. The display would randomly flash, and after using the unit for the morning, it refused to turn back on. Out came the soldering iron once again, and I replaced quite a few more capacitors. I'd like to say at this point that this feels like a blind exercise, with no particularly easy way to tell if a capacitor is bad. It's more of a case of replace and hope it works. Anyway, after replacing these capacitors, it all seemed to work a bit better. There would still be the odd random flash of the display, so I replaced more capacitors and the display seemed to work normal. However, the CD player refused to work. It would load a CD, but not play. So I took the CD player apart, cleaned everything and put it back together, but this didn't seem to improve anything. I figured it might be a loose connection, and luckily it was. Finally, after much soldering and guesswork, it was working. Now all it needed was a clean. So it's time to take a look around the Bose Wave music system and when you purchase a Bose Wave music system you can get it in this charcoal colour here or this white colour here. Um, looking around the unit it's covered in this uh, nice black charcoal plastic which is of a reasonable quality which is a good thing as this cost over a thousand New Zealand dollars new. Um, it looks retro-futuristic, kind of sort of a bit sky-fi, but also kind of a little bit maybe old-fashioned. It certainly doesn't look like any other uh, alarm clock radio out there on the market. There's also the silver part here for where the CD goes in. If you turn it around, you can see that there are inputs for power, FM, uh, Bose Link, auxiliary in, and headphones. If you take the cover off the Bose unit, you will see the innards. And like I said, that this piece of plastic here is a little bit broken, so it comes off quite easily. Here you can see the inner construction, which is where the Bose Wave comes into it, the Wave Guide technology. So the speakers are here, and then the resonant frequencies, the bass frequencies from the rear of the speaker, kind of go through here, through all these pipes, and have been amplified and then they come out this little port on them. Take a quick look at the manual. Well, helpfully, the first thing that Bose tell you to do is to plug it in, in case you were unfamiliar with electrical appliances and how they worked. Well, this is actually quite interesting, though, and this is an explanation of the waveguide technology. Yeah. But it's pretty basic, pretty easy to use, and we'll take a look at using it now. So let's look at the unit. So turning it on and putting it into AM mode, it works okay. It's got pretty good sound for AM radio. Although, that is U2, but man, it sounds like it's been played for a drain pipe. Overall, it's not terrible reception, though. 
FM radio reception is really good. This is without an antenna being plugged in and it's fairly clear for all the stations. You can set up to six presets with the remote control as well. So yeah, in FM stereo mode, it sounds really good with nice clear sound and really decent reception. Let's look at the CD player. Now, I don't think the CD player is working 100%. It seems to be a little bit funny. Sometimes you put the disc in and the disc will play, but no sound will come out. And sometimes it takes a long time to read the disc, but it does work and it works well enough to demonstrate in this video. Maybe I need to replace even more capacitors. Anyway, getting the disc and putting it in, sometimes it wants to take it. And sometimes you're going to take my disc. No, come on. Oh, if you turn it off, it allows you to insert the disc. That's, that does seem to be slightly faulty and slightly temperamental. Anyway, clicking the CD button allows it to read the disc. It takes a little bit of time to read the disc. Maybe the laser's a little bit old. It's not super perfect, but eventually it starts. And this being the Bose uh, Special Edition Lifestyle Music System CD, it's a demonstration CD. We've also got fast forward as well on the CD, so you can go through quite quickly. You've also got the tune, the MP3 buttons as well. So if you play an MP3 CD, you can uh, change tracks that way. And to eject the disc, you just click the eject button twice. I'm not entirely sure why Bose's uh, demonstration CD features so much classical music. Um, as who actually really listens to classical music, but um, it does. If we would put a more conventional CD in, this is what it sounds like. Will it take this disc? Do I have to turn it off again? Yes! Oh, come on, you can do it! In you go. Oh, not quite. Oh, now it makes other noises. As you can see, it's not super perfect, and right now I'm really demonstrating maybe it has a few issues. Okay, so that's enough of that. So it has a couple of other cool features. Um, I think if I click this button here long enough, it'll bring up a menu. And let's see how that all works. So snooze 10 minutes, so you've got a 10 minute snooze duration if you snooze it. Okay, so continuous play, you can have the continuous play function continue playing a source after a CD play. CD has continued play, finished playing. Time 12 hours, you can have 12 or 24 hour you can have brightness high. So what this means is that there's a light sensor in here which will change the brightness of the display uh, depending on what time of the day it is. It's a pretty good system. Uh, I think it works pretty well for what it is. Um, is it the last word in hi-fi? No, I don't think so. I think it has a reasonably good sound quality for what it is um, and it's perfectly acceptable as a bedside alarm clock. And it's probably one of the best sounding bedside alarm clocks. Much better than the tinny little speaker you get on top of some normal Panasonic unit. Um, overall, um, I think for what I paid for this, it's a good system and um, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, if you liked this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And like I said before, I've got a Patreon page now. If you've watched all the video and you've enjoyed it, please consider becoming a patron.
that would be much appreciated. Uh, please join me again soon as I will bring out more videos. I think the next video I'm going to be bringing out will be on the Bang and Olivson Bio Sound Sentry. So I hope you're all looking forward to that. Anyway, it's bye for now.